What if a synthetic dye crafted in the bustling chemical laboratories of 19th century Germany might hold unexpected promise for preserving your brain's energy as you age? Primarily known for its striking blue hue, this molecule once captured the imagination of medical pioneers who famously described it as a potential magic bullet for its selective affinity toward nerve tissue. Today, we're carefully examining that claim, not endorsing it, but exploring the intriguing possibility that methylene blue could modulate mitochondrial function and enhance neuronal resilience. Is there substance behind this century-old promise, or is methylene blue yet another molecule whose therapeutic legend outpaces reality? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Daily Value. Methylene blue is a relatively well-established compound initially synthesized as a textile dye in 1876. A decade later, in 1886, a pioneering scientist, Paul Ehrlich, injected methylthioninium chloride, now universally known as methylene blue, into rodents for experimental purposes. Ehrlich coined the term magic bullet due to its very interesting property of selectively targeting respiring tissue of the nervous system. Initially regarded merely as one among many synthetic dyes, methylene blue's early application by Ehrlich catalyzed a scientific revolution that extended its use into numerous novel experimental applications. Throughout its history spanning over 120 years, methylene blue has exhibited what can only be characterized as versatility finding roles as diverse as a redox indicator, anti-malarial agent, photosensitizer, supervital stain, and even as a chemotherapeutic agent in oncology. Notably, a renowned neuroscientist named Santiago Ramon E. Cajol employed what was known as the Ehrlich reaction using methylene blue in rodents to verify the existence of synaptic spines, confirming that these structures were not artifacts of staining techniques. By the earliest 20th century, psychiatrists explored methylene blue as an experimental therapeutic for schizophrenia due to its affinity for nervous tissue. This foundational observation has since been revisited and expanded into contemporary research establishing methylene blue as a potential candidate for memory enhancement as well as neuroprotection. Modern clinical applications include exploration in mild cognitive impairment, early stage Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, optic neuropathy, and various neurodegenerative disorders linked by mitochondrial dysfunction. At a biochemical level, methylene blue is what's known as a phenothiazine derivative capable of undergoing redox cycling between its oxidized form, which is blue colored, and reduced form known as leucomethylene blue, which is colorless. Its unique amphipathic nature being both hydrophilic and lipophilic allows a high degree of permeability through biological membranes, notably the blood-brain barrier. Its low molecular weight further aids rapid tissue delivery. Given its extensive history, methylene blue remains FDA approved as a treatment for methemoglobinemia. That's a condition where Fe2 plus ferrous iron of hemoglobin gets oxidized to Fe3 plus ferric iron, reducing the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin, which impairs oxygen release to tissues. All other uses of methylene blue are considered off-label. Over a century after its initial discovery, the multifaceted properties of methylene blue suggest a renewed revolution in neurotherapeutics, offering promising avenues to address aging-related cognitive decline and neurodegeneration driven by mitochondrial dysfunction. Aging in the brain isn't simply about losing cells. It's also characterized by declining cellular energy production. Central to this energy production are mitochondria, the microscopic powerhouses within our neurons. As we age, mitochondrial efficiency falters, ATP production drops, and harmful reactive oxygen species accumulate. This mitochondrial dysfunction is recognized as a primary contributor to cognitive decline and neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. In Parkinson's, mitochondrial impairment significantly impacts dopamine-producing neurons, making them susceptible to cell death due to oxidative stress. Think of these neurons as factories with malfunctioning equipment that produces less energy and more pollution, eventually leading to their closure. Methylene blue seems to offer a unique approach to counteract this issue, not by traditional drug receptor interactions, 
but by acting as an electron shuttle within mitochondria. At low concentrations, methylene blue can directly accept electrons from NADH at mitochondrial complex one, becoming reduced to its colorless form. Leucomethylene blue then transfers these electrons downstream directly to cytochrome C, effectively bypassing any blockages or inefficiencies at complexes one and three. Those are the sites of the highest reactive oxygen species production within a mitochondria. By creating this alternate electron pathway, methylene blue enhances activity at complex four, that's cytochrome C oxidase, boosting ATP production and reducing reactive oxygen species formation. Imagine a blocked highway causing traffic jams and accidents. Methylene blue provides an efficient detour, allowing traffic in the form of electrons to flow smoothly again, restoring efficient energy production and reducing harmful congestion. However, this beneficial effect seems to be dose dependent following what's called a hormetic response, meaning that low doses are beneficial while higher doses can be detrimental. In different animal models, effective low dose methylene blue ranges from approximately one to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight. At these doses, methylene blue enhances mitochondrial function and memory performance, but higher doses exceeding 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in rodents can disrupt mitochondrial function, stealing electrons from normal mitochondrial pathways, thereby acting as a pro-oxidant and making worse oxidative stress. In humans, clinical investigations have found that low-dose methylene blue, that's approximately 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram body weight orally or intravenously, to be safe and effective for enhancing mitochondrial respiration, and in some cases, cognitive function. Conversely, higher intravenous doses exceeding 7 milligrams per kilogram body weight can induce adverse effects, such as paradoxically causing methemoglobinemia rather than resolving it. Thus, dose precision with methylene blue is important. Again, methylene blue's phenothiazine ring grants it good fat solubility, enhancing rapid penetration across cell membranes and the blood-brain barrier. This permeability allows methylene blue to efficiently reach neuronal mitochondria. Additionally, methylene blue's chemical structure supports continuous oxidation reduction cycling between its two forms without even losing potency. This is akin to a battery continually recharging itself within mitochondria. Now, very interestingly and importantly, methylene blue's mitochondrial effects are activity dependent. Neurons actively engaged in demanding cognitive tasks develop higher mitochondrial membrane potentials, creating a stronger attraction point for methylene blue. Therefore, methylene blue preferentially accumulates in metabolically active brain regions. Animal studies demonstrate this phenomenon. Rodents given low-dose methylene blue, that's one to four milligrams per kilogram, exhibit increased cytochrome C activity, improved oxygen utilization, and enhanced performance in learning and memory tasks, specifically within brain regions heavily involved in these tasks. Cytochrome C oxidase activity is important to remember as that is the best predicting marker of a neuron's ability to produce energy. Previous hypotheses suggested that methylene blue's cognitive benefits were mainly due to improved oxygen transport via hemoglobin interactions. Remember how it reduces ferric iron to ferrous iron. However, research does show that methylene blue enhances cognitive performance even without significantly changing oxygen transport capacity. The true benefit of methylene blue lies not in delivering more oxygen, but rather in improving how effectively neurons use existing oxygen supplies. Think of methylene blue as upgrading the engine rather than simply providing more fuel. Ultimately, methylene blue's strength resides in its nuanced mechanism. It isn't a generalized antioxidant or cognitive enhancer, but rather a precise mitochondrial metabolic optimizer. It supports neuronal function by enhancing intrinsic mitochondrial capacity, particularly valuable under conditions of aging-related mitochondrial dysfunction. Animal research has shown robust evidence that methylene blue accumulates preferentially in brain tissue. For instance, studies report brain concentrations of methylene blue approximately 100 times higher than plasma within four hours following oral or intravenous administration in rodents. Interestingly, methylene blue treatment resulted in a notable enhancement of brain cytochrome C oxidase activity 
approximately 70% higher compared to untreated controls. Such elevation of cytochrome C oxidase is directly correlated with improved mnemonic capacity during tasks involving discrimination learning. Now, memory processing encompasses several critical phases. Those are encoding, consolidation, and retrieval, each facilitated by distinct neural mechanisms. Seminal research by Martinez Jr. and colleagues demonstrated the timing-specific nature of methylene blue's effects, administering one milligram per kilogram body weight of methylene blue immediately after training, and that significantly improved memory retention in animals performing an inhibitory avoidance task measured 24 hours later. However, administering the same dose either 15 minutes before training, six hours post-training, or immediately before testing showed no beneficial effects, clearly indicating that methylene blue enhances memory, specifically during the consolidation phase. This phase-dependent effectiveness as a consolidative enhancer is likely mediated through its action in brain mitochondria rather than general neurochemical interactions. Even more interestingly, methylene blue's memory-enhancing effects, as seen primarily in animal models, are not limited to one type of memory, but can affect consolidation of any memories that are being processed during the time that methylene blue is present as a redox agent in brain mitochondria. This has been shown in both normal conditions and in those associated with abnormal mitochondrial function. Interestingly, high doses of methylene blue, around 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, administered before training in animals, impaired memory retention, suggesting a dose-dependent and, again, hormetic effect. Lower doses, around 1 to 4 milligrams per kg, reliably enhanced memory without adverse side effects, whereas higher concentrations disrupted cognitive processes. This paradoxical dose-response relationship, it is consistent with methylene blue's redox properties. Optimal low doses likely facilitate electron transport in mitochondria, enhancing cellular energetics and antioxidant capacity, whereas excessive doses could disrupt electron flow, creating oxidative stress, as well as metabolic imbalance. As it comes to methylene blue's potential for helping aging brains, especially in Alzheimer's disease, human data does show some very interesting yet complex results. Recent clinical trials have suggested benefits, although findings have been mixed, largely dependent on the dosage used and condition it's been used in. In a major analysis conducted in 2019 by Schefter and colleagues, researchers explored the impact of a methylene blue derivative. This was a stabilized pharmaceutical grade form of methylene blue in its reduced form. Surprisingly, they found that lower doses, specifically around eight milligrams per day, did in fact provide cognitive benefits, slowing cognitive decline and reducing brain atrophy compared to significantly higher doses like 150 or 250 milligrams per day. Interestingly, the lower dose used in this study was initially intended only as a positive control and not actually as an experimental arm, yet it unexpectedly emerged as the most therapeutically beneficial dose, suggesting that when it comes to methylene blue, more might not necessarily be better. This finding was supported by Wilcock and colleagues in 2018. Their study demonstrated that Alzheimer's patients who received low doses of this pharmaceutically stabilized form of methylene blue, just four milligrams twice a day, had consistently better cognitive outcomes than patients receiving the same drug at higher doses or even alongside standard Alzheimer's medications like cholinesterase inhibitors and memantine. However, other studies exploring higher doses tell a different story. For example, Gauthier and colleagues in 2016 found no significant cognitive improvements in patients who were given higher daily doses of methylene blue, ranging from 75 to 125 milligrams twice a day. Similarly, research by Baddeley and colleagues in 2015 showed that although intermediate doses of methylene blue, around 138 milligrams daily, initially seemed promising, although higher doses quickly lost effectiveness, suggesting a complex relationship between dosage and therapeutic outcome. Further complicating the story, a recent study by Singh and colleagues in 2023 directly measured how methylene blue affects the human brain's energy metabolism using advanced neuroimaging techniques. Contrary to expectations, they found that intravenous doses between 0.5 and 1 milligram per kilogram of body weight 
actually reduced both cerebral blood flow and oxygen consumption in healthy volunteers. These reductions were dose dependent, suggesting an inhibitory rather than stimulating effect on brain metabolism at these clinically relevant doses. Taken together, these human studies show the complexity of methylene blue's action in the brain. They indicate that possible beneficial effects, especially for cognitive aging, may be achievable, but only within a narrow dosing window. Clearly, the future of methylene blue in clinical practice will depend on careful dose selection, targeted patient groups, and of course, further research. Before summarizing today's episode, it's important to discuss some concerns and cautions associated with the use of methylene blue. The most common adverse effect seen with methylene blue is the bluish green discoloration of urine. Another frequently reported side effect, especially following intravenous administration, can be limb pain. Additionally, methylene blue has notable monoamine oxidase inhibiting properties, meaning it can potentially interact with other medications affecting serotonin. Combining methylene blue with serotonergic medications such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or tricyclic antidepressants can lead to serotonin syndrome if the dose of methylene blue is high enough. In humans, methylene blue administration has been shown to cause central nervous system symptoms, such as dizziness, confusion, and headaches. Special care must also be taken with children where methylene blue administration has been linked to serious conditions like hyperbilirubinemia, respiratory depression, pulmonary edema, phototoxicity, and also hemolytic anemia. There are known contraindications with methylene blue use, It should not be used in patients who have a known hypersensitivity or a history of anaphylaxis following its previous administration. Additionally, it's contraindicated in patients with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency due to the risk of developing hemolytic anemia. Very importantly, methylene blue is also contraindicated in pregnancy. The FDA has assigned it a pregnancy class X rating due to the potential fetal complications. At therapeutic doses of 2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in an adult with no contraindications, methylene blue is generally considered safe. However, significant adverse effects typically occur when doses exceed 7 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Serotonin syndrome has been specifically associated with methylene blue doses as low as 5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight when combined with other serotonergic agents. Additionally, caution is required for patients with renal impairment as methylene blue can reduce renal blood flow. Thus, people using serotonergic medications should probably avoid methylene blue. Currently, no antidote exists for methylene blue toxicity. In the rare event of anaphylactic shock, the drug must be discontinued immediately. In today's episode, we've explored fascinating yet complex role of methylene blue in supporting brain health and potentially combating brain aging, methylene blue appears capable of enhancing mitochondrial function, offering neuroprotective benefits and potentially slowing cognitive decline, particularly at very specific lower doses. However, the clinical evidence remains nuanced, suggesting the need for careful dosing and patient selection. As research continues, it's essential to approach methylene blue with caution, understanding both its therapeutic potential as well as its risks. Clearly, optimizing its use for brain health will depend on further clinical studies, better understanding of dosing windows, and heightened awareness of its interactions and contraindications. Thank you for joining me today on Daily Value. Remember, aging biology isn't just about magic bullets, but targeted and informed strategies to support our body's energy systems. Be sure to subscribe and join me here next time as we continue exploring the science behind health. Stay sharp and stay healthy.